But I did. All right, here we go. Um, okay, so then we, uh, no worries. 
We have a we have a, a bill from NEIC, eight hundred and sixty four dollars. Now the bills are all here. If anybody wants to review, yeah. does that uh, tell us what that bill was for on what property? Uh, I wrote, yeah, let me see. Okay. 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 It's a couple of properties. So, <coughs> building permit retainer for Charles Hodges, 140 Jacobs Road. Yeah, that was one that we worked on. Yeah, electrical permit retainer and plumbing permit retainer, um, all on 140 Jacobs Road. And that was in the shop you was in the mailbox here at the And I brought it over to Jason. We just left it in the mailbox to check the mail and stuff in there. So that may be in our credit report because Jason, however they got it, that got what was it? Not my check. So we did receive a check on, but we don't really, you know, with the way that treasury reports are out, we don't know what actual deposit that was or anything. So. Yeah, and I got a a full printout. We got a full printout from Bouget from the of, of all. Transactions. I, yeah, yeah, I got that. I have not had a chance to review it. But I reviewed it, but it's very complicated. You don't know what exactly. Yeah, it looks just check numbers on it so you don't know where it really came from a lot. Yeah, it looked like a mess. Yeah. Um, there are two penalty bills in here. My, It looks to me like the penalty -like bill wasn't paid previously, and so then that rolled over, which is why it's $264.17. Um, Gatehouse Media, those are ads, um, $267.90. There is uh, an invoice from Chris Miller for plowing for $3,312.50, plowing and cinder, um, based on a last uh, snowstorm. Uh, additionally, I've chatted with uh, Chris Miller today. He said he has uh, an insurance writer um, he wasn't sure about having unemployment uh, compensation and if he has an employee, but he was going to uh, have his insurance broker contact me. Um, he has $125 on there for the church. Um, oh man, I messed this up. Because the 333 and the 750 don't have minuses. So this 422 and this 6793 are uh, wrong. Uh, but there is a, a bill for Bouget Fisher for the borough for $330, his final bill. Um, and then there's also a bill for the Sunshine Act lawsuit of $750. Uh, yeah, can I steal that back from you? What time would that be a bill in the end, the lights? Uh, I didn't have a chance to look through it, I just kind of put the numbers together, but here are the two bills. That's for the church, right? Uh, I don't know that the, it's been transferred over to the church or not. I, I received no notification, I didn't see any letters or emails saying that. Doesn't mean it's not true, but 87. We have to give the address of the bill. And this is street, so we're paying $87 for the street later. Yes. For the street rates. Okay, that's not the, just the church. How much is that one? Uh, I Yeah, that's what it looks like. Which I thought was authorized in the last at the last uh, the meeting on the 14th. So our, our electric bill for the lighting must be the same, eighty-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Looks like it's for street lights to set up on top. Street lighting is eighty-seven thirty-one.
So the sum total should be 15.0293 for general fund. And the new balance um, after if, if all the bills were paid was 48.67.27. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact, well, that, the possibility, you're right. the fact that we can't 
find it. So that's why I want to call the agency and see if it's been returned to the agency, because then we can go to Wayne Bank and say, where's this money? That's my thought. Okay. Ted, do you have some updated numbers for us? Yes, the turns out Carly's smarter than you. We're not, we're not surprised. <laughs> um, all right, the subtotal in general funds is $1,737.07. One seven three seven dot zero seven, making a new balance five thousand fifty six dollars and five cents five zero five six dot zero five. Were you at that? I need to stick with it. Huh? That's in the general fund. Okay. The balance. And you did that in your head. Well, you want to subtract from sixty three seventy. 
Jack? No. Jared? No. I'm going to say no as well. So you say no, we're not paying the bill? Not with that motion, no. Okay, no. Okay. You have three more votes. Yes, I'm waiting for the rest of everybody to say no. Great. I'm going to make a motion that we pay NEIC $864.87. Great. How did that motion go? Oh, that motion failed. They all voted no? Yeah, I didn't hear that. Kristen, 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 Kristen she didn't wasn't asked. And she, she didn't, she uh, wasn't asked. Kristen? No. Okay. Gail, did you vote yes? Oh, I voted no. no. Okay, so that, <laughs> that motion <laughs> failed. Oh, okay. so, so then I'd like to make a motion <laughs> to pay NEIC $864.87. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Great. Jack, how do you vote? Yes. Jared? Yes. Yes? Yes. Gail? Yes. Kristen? Yes. Okay, that motion passes. I'm going to make a motion to pay Penelac $264.17. Um, may I get a second? I second. Okay. Jack, how do you vote? Yes. Jared? Yes. I vote yes. Ted, yes. 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 Okay. We're going to make a motion to pay Gatehouse Media for the ads. The borough is around for $267.90. I second. Great. Jack? Yes. Jared? Yes. 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 Great. I'm going to make a, a motion to pay um, Chris Miller's plowing invoice of $3,312.50 contingent on him providing proof of liability insurance and uh, unemployment insurance if he has any employees working for him. You say in contingent? Contingent on him providing proof of insurance. I'll second that. Okay. How do you vote, Jack? Yes. Jared? Yes. I vote yes. 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 I am going to uh, pass a motion to pay Bouget Fisher's final bill of $330. Wait a minute. You forgot the church. church. I skipped it. You guys can make your own motions. I'm making motions right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be ordered, but... Uh, no, all right. Well, because... because I'm not sure I want to make a motion to pay the bill to plow the church because the church contract is un unsettled. And if you well, read the contract... Last year, we tried getting some information from Mr. Chris Miller, and he basically refused. We sent a certified letter and everything, and he refused to reply. So I think we should try to hold back some and force him to reply to the bird, like he was told. I make a motion we send a uh uh, table 125 for the church plowing and s send the letter again to Chris Miller uh, who authorized him to plow the church for last year and to uh, put the plowing on the church that he plows it when he's notified by council. Do we have a second? We'll send a motion. Any discussion? Jack, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. I vote yes. Yes. Gail? Yes. Yes. Okay, that motion passes unanimously. Great. Um, additionally, hmm, I don't know how I want this motion to go. We're going to skip that for now. Mm -hmm. uh, Bouget Fisher Borough, $330, final invoice. I make a motion to pay that bill. I'll second it. Any discussion? No. Jack? No. Jared? This is just for his fee for the $330. Would that be included in the insurance also or no? Yeah. No, so, so that's what the borough owes him. He has, yeah. a he has two contracts, one as borough solicitor and one as uh, lead attorney in the uh, Bates lawsuit, Sunshine mm -hmm. lawsuit. No. Okay. Um, I'm going to vote yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. I have that motion passed. I just wanted to note that the reason being is I have some email that haven't been uh, satisfied on legal opinions. I thought oh. that. I think before we finish paying him, I think we should get everything in return, make sure that everything's been collected and turned over to the borough, and then we'll discuss payment. So I think the, 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 the way to handle that is to make a motion to amend. You already voted. You should have your discussion before you vote. Sorry. Yes. Yes. I did ask for discussion, though. Not for, Not for that one. You, you, you did the rest. You did the rest, but you did that one. That's okay. We forgive you. I have to do this. How much do you think it is? You go to the inside of the All right. Um, so I'm going to make a motion um, to forward the $750 bill uh, to the insurance company, uh, the budget $750 bill for the uh, Sunshine Act lawsuit um, of $750 to the insurance company. Do we need to make a motion for that? Mm -hmm. Do you think? Do you think we need to make a motion? Sunshine. Sunshine. You can just vote. Yes. Yes. You, yes. yes. you just vote. You just not. You can just vote. You can vote any way you want. Right. You can make a motion for anything. You can make no. a motion for the story. Just not there. Yeah. Well, we can, uh, I mean, I need a second to vote. Are we going to a motion pass? One second to vote. Okay. Uh, Jack, can you vote on that? Do you over that motion again? So the motion is to forward the Uge Fisher Sunshine Act law invoice of $750 to the insurance company. Yes? There. I vote yes. Yes. Yeah. Is there any discussion on this before we vote? Ownership of the 70 by 70 lot. Do we remember this discussion? Mm -hmm. 
Houston. Yep. Yeah. Um, so this came in from Bouget. I believe this is his research. Um, anyone interested in following up on this and taking it? Yeah. Okay. Been after this for 15 years. Oh. Trying to get the blank off. I don't remember. Yeah. What's, you don't remember what's the 70 by 70 line? The community. The the community. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's in jail. She originally, when Bouget got back to me, it was because he got back to me and then he just tried to put us off in the dingweeds that he put us down with the community hall and give me a, a map of when they did it in 2021 in Seoul. It was nothing more than a smoke screen from Ron Bouget. All right, so uh, we have we have a couple letters of, of interest there, and I believe we still have an uh, open council seat. So whose seat is it though? I believe it's Gail's seat. So we need a vacancy board. Right? No. We'll be all we'll be all behind the wall. You can make a motion to accept one of them and vote that. Yeah, because if you remember, uh, Attorney Bouget said that the judge had already made a ruling, so the 30 days didn't make any difference. Right. Um, it's still in the code. Gales. Yeah, it's in the code. It's whether or not the judge is right is remains to be seen. Well, we had it by our girl's attorney that we could do it, so I guess we can appoint somebody to see. I don't know. I'm hesitant to uh, <clears throat> do things because Rob Bouget said it was okay. In fact, I will not do anything that he says. So I think we need to appoint a big person. Right, right. More than ninety days. Yeah. But does the reorganization I mean, does not, according to the judge last year, does not supersede the vacancy board seating? Well, technically, we didn't have a reorganization meeting. That's my right? No, this ain't even a, a reorganization year. No, and uh, so we're just all buggered up where you have four resignations, you know. So you can call it reorganization, you can call it what you want, but there's nothing in the borough code that says when four people end up resigning, this is what you do. Yeah, we're so in open territory. I think that's all, I think we're good on all that because those were filled immediately, right? So they were filled within 30 days. Correct. Mm -hmm. So Gales, I think to do it properly, we need to. Like, well, the vacancy one, board is definitely all over. Right. You've got to go back to the 1937 ruling. Oh, 37, I'm sorry. 1937 ruling. So I'm not even sure the vacancy board would, would apply here because it's after 30 days the vacancy board um, shall be. Okay, so. Within 30 days after the vacancy happens, the vacancy should be filled within 15 additional days by the vacancy board. Right. Right. So we've blown All right. So past that. If the vacancy is not filled by the vacancy board within 15 days, the chair or the remaining members of the vacancy board has to petition the court of common pleas to fill the vacancy by the appointment of a registered elector of the borough. And your vacancy board is going to be the council. Yeah, the vacancy board is a council, so that the yeah. vacancy board includes a citizen. Right. Right, which is Robert Martin. Right. Because he was appointed last year by Gail mm -hmm. to be the chair of the vacancy board. Right. But it seems to me yeah. that the council right. needs to petition the Court of Common Pleas, and we would submit those two letters to the Court of Common Pleas, and the judge would decide. No, no. Then what no, was the no. ruling on no. Robert Rome? We don't need to do all that. We just need to have a vacancy board because we're beyond the 30. What up? 45 days. Vacancy board is only in effect for 15 days. That's if basically if the vacancy yeah. board can't decide, can't agree on who they want. So I'll see. I would ask the board to agree that if you go back to the 1937 case, you can point anybody at any time to what the judge actually said that the ruling was the 1937 case. So, I would throw it out there, right? Um, Lou, it's nice to put a thing in, but Kelly's had at least two in or three. I don't know if you want to call.
on what her ventures. So at this point, I think she's head in line, and I'd like to make a motion to appoint Kelly to council. Kelly Ballmer to council. Another seat comes up. We've got your letter. You're next on, on there. That's my motion. Do we have a second? Okay. Do we want to have any discussion about the motion? I have to agree, so we'll give you some time. Before the court ruling, I agree with you, Ted. After the court ruling.
Um, Jack, how do you vote on the motion? Uh, yes. Yeah. Jared. I'm going to vote no. No, for the reason I'd like to have some research. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the 1937 ruling? Yeah, yeah, we want to, yeah, I, I, I think. That's what I'm saying. basing my mind on was, you know, the judge already said, it. it didn't matter that we failed on the 30 days and 15 days that they could point it. All right. Well, Ray, just so you know, mm -hmm. the vacancy board says we want to register an elector of the borough who shall be appointed by the council at the council's first meeting each calendar year or as soon as practical. So it sounds uh, like you have to reappoint them each year. Reappoint them each year. That's, right. that's yeah. right. Okay, all right, well, that's fair. So, um, and this is the first meeting. So I'm gonna make a motion to uh, amend the meeting agenda to appoint a uh, vacancy board chair. And, and uh, to, to continue the appointment of uh, Robert Martin as the vacancy board chair. One motion at a time? Okay. So I'm making a motion to uh, modify the meeting agenda. Do I have a second? I second it. Jack? Uh, I will say yes, but we probably should be checking with him before we motion him in. Uh, that's fair. I would say yes, and if he denies it, he denies it, but... Okay. Yeah. This is the idea to amend the agenda, though. Yeah, the first one is, first one is to amend the agenda to appoint the vacancy chair. Oh, yes, I am. Okay. Yes. 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 Motion passes. So then I will also make a motion to uh, reappoint Robert Martin as uh, vacancy chair. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Jack? Yes. Jack? Yes. I say yes. 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 Motion pass, passes unanimously. So I will reach out to Robert Martin. And once we get a solicitor and get, and, and get this uh, solved. Um, and uh, confirm if he's okay with that point. All right. Uh, old business. Uh, committee chair assignments uh, by <laughs> council president. Okay. So, oh no, I'm sorry. I skipped right over public comment, two minute sheets. So, this is a little bit different than how we've been doing things, and, and it's kind of a learning process. But I was thinking that since we're posting the agendas ahead of time, that uh, the public could submit and or arrive at a meeting with a prepared statement and get two minutes of the floor to discuss uh, uh, items on the agenda. Do I have any comment from the public? Lou, you are first. I'm uh, requesting uh, council to consider me with the final city uh, uh, councilman, the Senate councilman. Okay. Um, Okay, that's that's uh, fair. I, I think we were all assuming that 
we can't, we, we've decided that we can't make a decision tonight. And so that, I think we ended with, we were going to find out what to do with both of the letters. And then we were going to bring both the letters to be considered again. Is that okay? And who's going to consider the letters? The council will consider the letters. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're going to bring it back before the council. But we just don't know if we can actually vote on them. That, that, that's the, the concern. And we want to make sure we do it right so that if you or, or Kelly end up in the seat, that there's no issue about how or why it happened. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to do it right. Because they didn't fill my seat after my resignation. They didn't fill it within a lot of time. So we have to be very careful that we are following the letter of the law so there are no repercussions because we don't want to be known as the apocalypse six. Yeah, yeah, because we're way, we're, we're, we're outside what the, the code book actually gives us direction on, so we need some, some advice. Uh, Carly. Um, this may have already been settled, but it was one of the things that in, I believe it was the February meeting last year, it was voted to pay Chris Miller, and I brought up at that meeting at that time that the bill they were referencing paying was submitted in early December and it was voted on to be paid at the December 22nd meeting and it was paid and then there was talk about paying it, voting to pay Chris Miller and his bill again. And in addition to the December bill of the 21 bill, there was additional items added including following the church. And at that time the February Council of 22 voted to pay that bill, and it was all coming from liquid fuels. Just as a reference, I don't know if that ever got fixed, I don't know if that ever got modified, but if you guys paid Chris Miller to plow the church under liquid fuels, that's a major no-no in the eyes of the state. And I don't know if you really caught that. I, I know I mentioned it to some people, and they said we'll look into it, but I don't know if it got followed up on because Chris, Chris although he does a nice job plowing, does not itemize his bills. And it just said plowing the church. It didn't say how many hours or whatever. And you guys wrote one check. I'm assuming it all came from liquid fuels. Not from a general fund. So. Oh, you're saying from the church specifically? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 To transfer the money from the fields, or however that, one way or the other, from general fund back to. Yeah, I would just double check and make sure it happens when those right. folks do get all. <laughs> That's right, because we had. We don't know if that happened. It was motion, and was supposed to happen. And uh, again. Maybe we'll tell you better if we get our paperwork back. Uh, <laughs> I know, but just I had two minutes. Just wanted to put it out there on the radar. Yeah. That yeah, I, I, I agree with you. No, I, I, I appreciate that. We will definitely check in on that. Um, you don't have any paperwork or anything that, that you'd like to submit to the council, do you? For that? For that. No, because no. I was out of the... Yeah, I mean, the minutes from February 2018 February. Right, right. No, that we, we, we have all that. I was just, if you had anything else. The borough records would have the bills from December 2021, and then the yeah. auditor should have them. Yes, your time's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. any, anyone else? Can I make a suggestion? Uh, yes. We remove the two minutes. I'm on. Okay. And that's that great. will cause severe problems, I feel. Okay. In the future. That's fair. I um I appreciate that. I think uh, if the public is bringing something that the council is very interested in listening to, we can extend right. the time. Correct. Right. Um, I like the idea of trying to be succinct about the point. Okay. We're a small, we're a small community, so we'll play. We bring James back about the state that's going to be more than two minutes. Right. Well, what's good for him should be good for Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's, that's an easy one. That would be considered public comment. That is some easier to help the council. Well, so that should, wouldn't be considered public comment. Okay. Two minutes. It, but it would be on the agenda, right? Two minutes. Yeah, it's on the note for me. That's that's fair. I can extend that. Um, maybe I'll just make a public comment on, on agenda items, and we'll go from there. Uh, 
All right, and then you'll notice at the at the end of the meeting there is also an open public comment, so people can comment about anything that they would like. But I figure we will put public comment about the agenda in front. For Yes, tomatoes. All right, uh, committee chair assignments. Um, I'm appointing uh, Ted Basil as chair of the finance committee. Um, uh, of administration and records, I'd like to appoint uh, Kristen Potter um, uh, for the Borough Boundaries and Committee. Uh, for Borough Boundaries Committee, Jack Dowden. Um, for Road Committee, the Chair, uh, I'd like to be Jack Dowden. And appointment of Grants Committee uh, is Gail Bennett. Did I say Kristen Potter? I think I read that correctly. Um, two things about these appointments. Um, is um, I would like the, the chair committee to come back at the February meeting with a civilian advisor uh, that they want to work with on the committee um, rather than me dictating that. Uh, just someone you're going to have to work with. Um, and I know, Jared, you had expressed interest in working in the road committee, so uh, maybe check with Jack and see if um, you can chat over that. Any questions or comments? You say civilian, you mean citizen. Citizen. Yes. A non council <laughs> member. What were we going to say, Jason? I know it's probably not worth talking. Bring it up. But everything's got to be brought back to the council. Yes. So prior, it was road. road committee would do all all the work. They had all the calls. I think we should put a stop to that right now. Okay. We're so we brought to the council. So the way the committees function, yes, the committee so that the actually actually Gail, I have I have a very strong opinion about how I'd love this to run. Right, I, right, I think right. we're in I think we're in agreement, but that's an excellent point and I guess I I, I should be very clear about this. So how I anticipated working is that the, you know, Jack for the road committee will work with a citizen and um, work with me, we will meet each month, and then they will bring the product of that work to the council for the council to then vote and make motions on. Yeah. So, Go ahead. so, so and, and this is a learning process for all of us, this is very different than how it's been done in the past, um, but I'm hoping that it gives both the committee chairs some uh, agency and um, also will help engage the council, right? Because the agendas will start to become reviewing each of the, the presentation of each of the uh, chairs. Does that, that, that sound okay? Yeah. You're gonna come into issues like the roads. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets stuck on Penn Hill and they give a call, they need that road center because it's icy. We can't wait to bring that back to council. Somebody's gotta act upon that kind of stuff. So, okay. we. You're going to have to have somebody that can act upon that. So that, that's going to have to go into that in the same way as the uh, road is So, what's that? Road maintenance is already contracted, though. All you have to do is contact Chris Miller or, or whoever it is. Or it's contract. And say, hey, take care of this, right? Yeah, well. Or, or that's right. Right. Yeah, you can't wait to bring back the house. Or how. how right. How that that gives house. everybody in the borough the opportunity to how? just call whenever. How I would suggest this might go is that the chairman of the road committee would figure out a process that would handle that, I mean, making a designated person, and then bringing that process to the council and allowing the council to vote and approve it. And then that way, it's all your head, no, Gail. Yeah, no. What's your opinion? I, I agree with yeah, Kat. There are times when we live in the Northeast that something happens. And someone's, you know, made a snowstorm or something, and it hasn't been taken care of. There has to, the citizen has to be able to say, this road is blocked and I can't get out. exactly what I'm That's saying. That's right. But I would like the road committee yeah. chairman to, to define that process right. with a citizen and then bring that process to the council and have the council approve it. So that we know well, how does that happen? What happen if, if, how does that happen if? Say you had your meeting December 3rd, on December 5th you have a huge snowstorm and that person calls and needs something taken care of. That means the chairman can't do anything until your meeting. And 
no, 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 you're misunderstanding. The process, the process that the chairman is going to say is that we call so and so for road maintenance. Yeah. Here's our backup person, right? So I want it formally decided by the person who's in charge what the process is, and I want the council to vote on that process so that the citizens and the council all know how it's supposed to work. That's all. And then, so we would maybe do that every year because maybe people get tired of answering phone calls when it's snowing at, on December 5th, right? So, but yeah, very fair question, but, but the goal is, that, that's the goal. I want to know how you're going to inform the residents of who they contact. At this point right now, right. they're all going to call you. Which is, which is, probably mm -hmm. we call tomorrow because that's the way it's been. It's like, if you can always go to that, or they go, hey, this person's on council, they, they'll probably contact that person if they know who's that. I, I, so, I'm so I'm say, how, how do you plan on so, 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 that is an excellent topic, and I promise that I will address that specifically at the February meeting. It's on my roadmap, I just have not been able to get to it, but communication with the, with the Borough residents about the actions of council and is, is top priority. Here. Are you running the, the website? Does the website is a code? separate, independent, private. Oh, independent. Well, I know it's like the agenda and stuff was on there and stuff like that. Yeah, anything that's made public that the, the person who runs that photographs it and, and posts it as a service, but that is not associated with Not an with official it. truck of borough. It's not official at all. Hmm. That's something to consider. You know, that that is also <laughs> part of what we're going to do. Right. I'm not talking. After all this conversation, I'm getting confused here. Yeah. Jack's road chairman. I get stuck on Cox and Lake Road. I call Jack, ask him he can get some cinders out. He should have the authority to call Chris, say the road needs to be cindered. Right. Then you're a person that. Jack contacts will not see you until the next month's meeting. No. And let's get the person to take the No, no, no. All we're doing, all we're doing, Dave, is the chairman of the committee will define the process of who to call and when, and then the council will vote on it, and then that will just be the process that happens. And that person only one vote. It's not every it, time the It's not every month. It's only one for what the process well, is. Okay. I just want to know that. If a person's stuck on the road, Jack has authorities to have some <coughs> cinder, then. Yes. yes. If that's what the committee chair, the road committee chair might decide to call Jerry because the road committee chair goes to bed early. So, Just they're going to yes. 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 the public will find the procedures to call them out. Long since we're we're setting up a procedure. Right. And we're not going to just say that's the procedure of vote. I basically I worded it wrong myself, so I. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. I this, yes, I understand the public's concerned about this. I I will ensure that we are not putting processes in the way of getting things done. We are putting processes so that you know what is getting done. Um, all right. So uh, moving on. Uh, Basil Sunshine Act lawsuit status update. Um, unfortunately. I do not have uh, an update. So I'd like to uh, make a motion to table that for this meeting. Do I have a Yeah, I just, you know, when I read it, 
it, but like, why do you mention in the fourth individual names? Judge supposedly at least have a prejudice. All right. His tenant or his contract expired December 31st. For the town. For the borough. But he would continue with the lawsuit because he represents, also represents those four individuals. Well, it's a separate contract. Yes. And I have that email here. But if he's not our solicitor, if we don't hire him back, he has absolutely no reason to give us any information. <coughs> Well, that's untrue because he is contracted to defend the borough in the lawsuit, so he has to give us the information for, for right. regarding the case. Like he's our lawyer for that. Mm -hmm. Unless, Unless you know, anything. What information has he given for the council to take? That is my question. That's been answered. He does say in a letter. Uh, Dated December 29th, uh, about how his month contract ends December 30th. This is December 31st. However, as counsel of record in the Bainsaw lawsuit, my job is to protect the borough legally from adverse consequences in this lawsuit. He says that in that letter. Does it protect the borough? Yes. It says yes. protect the borough. <clears throat> And then I guess I, I, um, and I then, spoke. And then, uh, sorry, it also is printed out. It says, um, please understand, I hold two positions, solicitor for the borough in general matters, which ends on December 31st, counsel for struck on borough counsel and the four individual defendants in the currently based on lawsuit, which continues beyond December 31st, unless and until either one of us decides the relationship should end. So it says start the borough council and the four individuals. So if the borough were to fire him, the four individuals could still retain him. At their own expense. At their own expense, sure, of course. But the borough would be responsible for supplying another solicitor to defend the borough. No charge. Right. But we need it, wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily have to be a solicitor. We could hire any lawyer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am with him. Any budget? All right. Um, I know there was a motion passed by previous council uh, to advertise for a secretary treasurer position. I never saw, heard, or <coughs> saw that. Let's go back to the oh, Bates sure. Sunshine Act law. Sure. I'd like to make a motion on that to authorize. Uh, President um, Woods to further review on the Beta lawsuit. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Does we have a second? Can you, can you elaborate on that? Right, that's rather vague. So, so he could reach out to the insurance company and the budget, uh, Bougie, like what's really going on with the Beta lawsuit. Because I don't feel we've got all the documents and all the paperwork on it. So I think we should be able to uh, follow up with this. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Do we have a second? We set them up. Okay. Any discussion? <coughs> and Jack, can you go? Yes. 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 Okay, so that motion. Mm -hmm. Right, so that motion passes to review and contact Bouget and the insurance company, right? Yep. Okay.
Where are we going to be advertising with Mr. Bruce? Oh. Yeah. Now, what
No, there's not. But it, again, we would, we would have to make a motion and, and to move it. Right now, we have a motion on the table to advertise for a secretary and treasurer. We have a second. Jack, how do you vote? Yes. Jerry? Yes. 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 Okay, that motion passes to advertise for a secretary and treasurer. Jack, did you want to add a motion to, to designate some places or anything? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we advertise in a Wayne on Tri-County Independent. Tri-County Independent, uh, Susquehanna Transcript, and a Hancock Herald. Any, any discussion? Jack, how do you vote? Yes. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Well, I have a question. Okay, you're advertising for a secretary. What? Okay, at what ask. rate? I mean, what? What is the? What, okay. You, you can't have an advertisement and have people respond to it I if you it. don't say, "Okay, it. we're going to pay you two dollars a day." Okay. But, so, okay. so. Um, but we need maybe, to get maybe it. making a motion suggesting that uh, one of the council members or myself creates the advertisement um, and you know and shares it with council to decide or I don't know like we passed the point of discussion because it's been uh, it's been we're going to advertise. No, this is an entirely different thing. You're going to do the advertisement, but we there's got to be specifics. Okay. As to their job description. Well, that would be the no, that would be the negotiation agreement. Right. Like if somebody's interested in it, then we can bring it back to negotiation and make a final vote on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like like right now, we're not going to this advertisement isn't make, making a vote on who we're hiring. No, no. So no, when no. we go That's to hire, I'm then we saying, come I'm up saying, with. I'm saying specifics as to what their duties would be. All of that has to be included. Well, we got to limit it down so we're not paying right five hundred dollars for the advertisement. The duties so, are. Specifically called out in, right. in the code, so that's right. what we need them to do. Right. And we don't necessarily need to advertise salary because we're not going to be competing with salaries. So I think that it's if we get someone interested, then we can talk to them about what that may involve. Okay. Um, if you'd like to make a motion to add any specifics, we can do that. Um, no, I just wanted. I just wanted. I simply wanted a clarification as to what you were going to put into the ad. You just said ad, and I wanted a clarification as no. to what you were to put in the ad. That's fair. It's totally fair. Uh, okay. Uh, Mini. Go ahead. I would like to move that we also advertise for secretary treasurer on a website and other social appropriate social media. That people actually look at. Oh, yeah. No offense, Jack. I didn't know it was three newspapers. Actually, I knew two of them. I know the Hancock Herald. Okay, so and when you say website, I don't know what that means. Okay, so and when you say website, do you have one in mind? Um, don't we have a website? Oh, we still don't. Have that, right? We don't have. <coughs> I thought we had one. Pacific Association had a Facebook page. So. That's a good place. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion, Ted. Second. I don't know how to make that second. Yeah, you second. I second. Okay. Right. second. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Motion passes. We have a secretary treasurer hired. We've got three motions out there. So we any, there. Any, any other uh, secretary treasurer position oh. motions that anybody wants to make? We've got three. We've got three more. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good to go. All right, great. Um, Number L basis. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a motion to table the mini STMP contract update. Um, mm -hmm. I have got no information from um, uh, Jim Rose yet. Okay. I'll second the motion. Jack. Yes. Jerry. Yes. 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 Okay. Motion tabled. Um, so Keith Payne will be returning the uh, borough of records and files tomorrow at this location at noon. Um, if anybody is interested in witnessing that, please contact me directly after this meeting um, and we will make arrangements. We do need to avoid a quorum. I anyway, so. You know what? I still think you're getting off easier. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Um, I sent in the email uh, all the files that we sent out to the council. Um, the
contract that was sent to, that was in the borough records from December 22nd, as well as the contract that was in the borough records from March 9th. I don't know if council members had a chance to review that and yeah. had any comments. Um, I will just make a comment that I think with the contract as written, the borough is a serious liability uh, for potential lawsuits. And God knows what else, and we need to really take a hard look at uh, whether or not we can get our money back. That would be nice, but uh, we need to get out of that liability situation. Did you have any uh, specific liabilities in mind? Or so if someone goes to church at the Structure Baptist Church and they slip and fall on the steps, they're going to sue the borough. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to uh, Ray, President Ray Wood and Vice President Jack Dow to follow up with Attorney Rickner on the uh, sale of the church that was handled from beginning to end. Except for that Any uh, discussion? And that's Rick Nerd, right? I guess it is. Our assistant solicitor. Assistant solicitor, Rick Nerd, yeah. Uh, Christine Rick Nerd, do you believe? Is she still our assistant? Do they haven't fired her yet? We've never seen the contract. <clears throat> yeah. How do you know she did? We don't. <laughs> Uh, well, we haven't seen that itemized bill yet, that's why I want to follow up with her from start to finish. Yeah, I, uh, I so who actually contacted her? We don't know. So, that's why I think it, it, it'd be really important to start finding out and getting information and getting documents. It's some questions to answer. Did we, just, we got a second on it, right? Yeah. All right, so let's do a vote. Yes. Uh, Jack? Yes. Yes. No, I'm just thinking. Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Um, I also took the liberty today to draft a letter um, I would share with you now uh, for Solicitor Rickner. Um, if you guys can review these in, all right, like fifth grade. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if you guys wouldn't mind reviewing those and giving me notes. Uh, that would be concerning. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry. Okay, so uh, I have a letter dated December 20th, 
2020 from uh, Jay Fisher, uh, attention Keith Payne and Starford Borough Council. Dear Keith, in close, please find the uh, recorded road maintenance agreements for Buck Falls Road, Carpenter Hill Road, Leech Creek Road, and Penn Hill Road. Please keep these important legal documents in a safe file for the borough. Uh, this was handed to me at the last meeting by Mayor Jason, who had picked it up from the mail. So, um, in their gratitude. Um, I also have a second letter. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, find 13 road file, uh, 13 file road maintenance agreements that I am submitting on behalf of Storka Borough. Sincerely, Ronald M. Bouget, uh, CC Storka Borough Council by email. Um, these are way too much for all of us to read here. Um, it is surprising to me that we see. But so a lot of them are. Duplicates, yeah, I think but they had to get the landlord, Lily and Robert signed one. Then the next one is the same exact agreement, which um, the daughter up above yeah. had to sign. Well, yeah. and then, I just looked through them through there, so there's probably for each land they had because Robert and Lily signed, uh, signed a couple of them, so it must be for each. Was one for Fairmont? They're all, they're all in there. No, none for Fairmont. Carpenter Hill, Leech Creek, Leech Creek, or Lake Road, Leech Creek, Penn Hill, Penn Hill, Penn Hill, Penn Hill. Penn Hill. Oh, no, zero dollars. Well, that, I was going to say, that's just more ammunition for you guys because why did they, you know, single out and leave out uh, Fairmont Road and Cox and Lake Road? And all those guys are going to right. sign yeah, it. Yeah, nothing to do with it. Oh, excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent question. My, my concern is that this was certified on December 15th at the uh, Tom and Derry office. And who paid for it? Uh, and who was it voted for? I don't remember a vote, and um, I'm not sure uh, how it came like, like I said, this came in, I thought it would be important to share with the council, and then uh, in the file that they filed it in the recorder, the fees would cost around $1,500. Just so that's just and again, and then that who authorized, where was the vote in this discussion to move on these contracts? I can't answer your questions. <laughs> yeah, I don't have answers. Very good questions. I don't know if you need to follow the files. You guys need to hire a solicitor and one who has some cojones. Yeah. Have some what? Some testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do a lot of paper shuffling. Paper shuffling. Uh, people, paper shuffling. Does anybody want to pass any motions related to these? Uh, right now, I, I don't know what we should do. I know there's a borough code that uh, if there's special things for landowners, that the borough can sometimes go back and assess the landowners. So I recommend maybe it's something to see what we can do because there's. Quite a cost for the borough here for what this is all about. Yeah. To me, it sort of seems like maybe Darrell wanted to match his agreement that they come up with the borough. Including the county bridge? Is bridge included in that? Yep. Yeah. Isn't it a, a county state bridge? bridge? State bridge. State, state, state bridge. bridge. That's great. So, uh, road committee chairman, I'm going to hand these to you. Well, I recommend once we have a solicitor that we investigate how these contracts were entered into on behalf of the borough and um, proceed from there. Right. Do you want to make a motion to make it official? I would move that we do that. <laughs> once we have a solicitor, I move that once we have a solicitor, uh, we investigate how these contracts were entered in on behalf of the borough and invest in the, take appropriate action according to the law. I'll second that motion. Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Nice. All right. And uh, we had some public comment on that, but I'd like to open the floor for any final public comment. The only thing I have to say is uh, yeah, I'm interested in getting on the surveying committee if there's a civilian on it. Yes. Boundaries and borders. I have to put in a letter to get voted on. 
because I can see as a possibility when Cox and Lake Road is done, you're going part of Preston Township. Sure, sure. Um, I think I and next think, we got to get, I know, some way somehow get on the surveying. Yeah. Some way to stop a lot of this, especially with his resolutions and everything else that he has developed. So, so what I, I, I don't, we don't need to vote. I'm leaving that decision up to the chairs of the committees who they would like to work with. So, reach out to Jack, who's the chairman of the Boundaries and Borders Committee. And I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I know you guys, you guys have a difficult relationship, but maybe you can put that aside for the. Thank you. I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta realize that this is not a stand up comedy night. All right. <laughs> No, I know. I apologize. Um, I didn't. Different color people. Um, I have one question, which is uh, during the course of the meetings, what amendments are allowed to be made to the agenda once it starts? Because there are some that are legal to be made and those that are not legal to be made. And is do you know the discernment between what's a legal amendment to your agenda and what is not? So you don't fall into a lawsuit for sunshine violations? Just wait one second. Well, she's right. looking them up now. I know. Yeah. But my yeah. question was, do you know, because you made, you made amendments to the but agenda this evening, and I wanted to know if anybody on the council actually what was a legal amendment to the agenda and what is not, so that if one were made during a meeting, someone would stop it before damage was done. That, that was my question. And then my comment was, as far as Secretary and Treasurer goes, um, I think you need to give as many details as possible and hire local, i.e. someone who isn't going to drive an hour and a half to get to the meeting. Uh, at this, uh, I know what you're saying, but at this point, we need anybody. I know most people are most people are scared off, but for what you're going to offer for pay, I don't think you're going to get anyone long-term committed be willing to drive the distance right. for what we can offer. Those are fair. Those are both fair <coughs> comments. Thank you very much for your input. Nothing. Public comment, not, not council comment. What? <laughs> it's public comment. We're letting the public tell us what they think. We don't necessarily have to reply. Well, no. I think both of those, I think, I think both comments were very insightful and helpful yeah. to the borough. All right, uh, with, without objection, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. No, yeah. you got a good yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Okay.